Uh, building uh, escalation. So like, uh, huh? Escalation. All right. So here's gonna be some things. When you guys open a set and you're talking to a girl, you're looking for cues to see if you can push for like continue to move forward, right? So sometimes you're just not aware of them, right? Let's just say there's three guys and there's one girl and every guy is trying to hit on that girl. This is one thing that I learned that helped me out a lot too, is the body part furthest away from the brain is the one you're least likely aware of what it's doing. So when we learn to lie, it starts up here as children. Oh fuck, what did you say? <gasps> and you cover your mouth. As you get older, you, we have micro gestures. We learn to hide these things a little bit differently. So Bill Clinton has a famous speech. He goes, I did not have sex with that woman. It's Lewinsky. And then he went like this. Yeah. That is a micro gesture of this. He's trying to stop himself from saying a lie. You know, when you're, when you don't like something that you're hearing when you're a kid, you cover your ears. When you don't like something you're seeing, you cover your eyes. So sometimes people will be talking and you're like, yeah, yeah. And like, this is a micro gesture if they don't like what you're saying. And they're touching their ear. You know what I mean? If someone's talking to you and they just keep looking at the exit, their mind is telling them where they want to go. And you should be able to be aware enough to understand that that's where their mind is. But if you're talking, three guys, one girl, and you open her, but these two other guys come in and they're talking to her. You guys ever step, you guys all ever had a dog? Yeah. yeah. You guys ever like just for fucking, you're bored, you're walking around the house and your dog's asleep on the couch or something and you walk into the room and then you guys just lock eyes and you start just going like that. And then he's going, and he's also pretending, but then out of nowhere, like he's showing that he's ready to fight, but then out of nowhere, then his tail just starts going like that. Yeah. So he's hiding everything up here, but his tail's giving it away because yeah. he's unaware of what's happening back there. So the feet will point to where the mind wants to be. So if there's three guys, you're here, and her foot's like this, her mind is on you. And you might be confused, you're like, oh, these guys just keep talking, she's responding, but she could also just be polite. But you opened her, she's still attracted to you, and you don't know, and you think, fuck, I'm getting amogged by these guys, and you lose the set because you think, you know what I mean? So, um, Little social cues like that. So you have to understand where you're at in the set. But when you understand that a girl is interested in you and then you bring her or you isolate her or you have her sitting on a couch or something like that, I want to immediately get into touching as, and make that as comfortable as possible because you have to remember that girls are also nervous. Guys aren't the only one that's nervous. When you approach a girl, you might be feeling something. You have to remember these 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds, they're also nervous. You know what I mean? They don't know what's happening. They don't know what you are, or how this is gonna go, or what kind of situation she's gonna be in. So anytime you can remove discomfort, girls like it because they want to have sex as well and have fun. So when you're able to just remove all these discomfortable things, then you're able to move on and build some type of escalation. I'm gonna go ahead and sit down because I'm gonna give you guys some really good. Uh, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna give you guys some really good things I use. That bro, mystery method shit. I learned this stuff years ago. I haven't really changed it. I've added to my palette, but it's all pretty much been the same. So in front of each other, confrontational. You play chess, you play checkers like this. Side by side, collaborative. You look at blueprints together. You can also be like this very close to a girl the same way you and I were close without it feeling threatening, right? Have you guys ever sat with a girl and you're like, oh, okay, it seems like she's interested. I don't know how to like make the move, right? So there was a saying that Mr. used to say that was, if you say one interesting thing, she'll think, oh, that's interesting. If you say a few interesting things, she'll think, oh, he's interesting, right? One thing you guys should just add to your palette of things you do on a daily basis is just being up to date and understanding culture and understanding trends and things that are happening in the real world. So it gives you topics to talk about. You know what I mean? Like when people are making fun of the elections or Michael Jackson when he thing was going on, the Kendrick and Drake beef, just things that are like of popular topic that you guys can joke and talk about. This is just, just be part of your regiment, just being aware, right? When it comes to building like sexual tension, one of the things I love to do is when I sit with a girl, I start talking to her and I actually did used to teach body language. So this is literally my whole game is I talk to them about body language. Now girls love talking about themselves they're fucking narcissists. And when you can tell them about them, they get so excited. I was literally running this on the last night, that uh, Russian girl, that's all I was doing. Even that other girl, that Asian girl that was sitting here, bro, I didn't even, uh, I never even got her social media and I woke up this morning and she had DM'd me. She added me overnight, which means she searched me 
through someone's story, found me, added me, DM'd me. Uh, no, the Asian girl that was sitting right here, there's a big titty bitch right here that was hot. And then the other Asian girl was the next best one, in my opinion. And when I walked into this set, I'm like, hmm, I don't know how to get over there. I'm going to start here. And I started with this girl, and this girl was really into me. But I literally just run game just talking about, like, palms, talking about rings, talking about clothes. Everything you put on your body is the representation of you. So unless your mom is dressing you, everything you put on your body is a reflection of you. So I say this to girls. This is like the game. This is the game I'm running. And they go, oh, like, well, what do you mean? Like, what, is, what does my outfit mean about me? And I was like, that you're a slut. But I say it in such a funny, fashionable way, like it's a joke. And I drag it on the word slut. <laughs> and girls always laugh. They go, stop. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it doesn't mean that. Or maybe it does. I don't know. I was like, but you know one thing I do notice is you're wearing rings, you know? So like, she's like, why? What does that mean? I'm like, oh, well, you've never heard this stuff? And she's like, no. I'm like, well, every finger represents a different personality trait on a person. You know, so there's a reason why you put on this finger. Like, let me see your hand. And I just grab her hands. Touching of palms is a very sensual place. Just like neck, just like here, right? Palms are the most revealing things that we have. When someone pulls a gun, we show palms to show openness and honesty, right? When someone goes to court, they swear on a Bible, they put one hand on the Bible, one hand to show open honesty, close it off. Hands in pockets, cops have you remove them. They need to see your palms, right? This, think about this way, open honesty, right? Invitation, you invite a girl out to dance. What does this mean versus if someone goes like this? It's fucking Hitler. The only difference is the fucking palm. It's this dominance that you're, you're, you're signaling, right? Versus invitational. So, like, oh, watch, let me see your hands. And again, you're getting reads because how comfortable is she doing all these things? When she gives you her hands very playfully, I'm like, all right, are you right-handed or left-handed? She goes, oh, I'm right-handed. I'm like, all right, so the right hand is how you want the world to see you. Your left hand is your more private side. So get this one out of here and I fucking throw it, right? And then I'm like, so then I grab her hand and I flip it around. And then like, and I'm like, all right, so the pinky ring is like that of like, oh, because even this one, I was doing this with her. And she goes, oh, those are like the, um, what'd she say? The criminals in the movies. And I said, that's very good intuition. I said, that's really on point. I'll explain why. But the pinky ring is that of like a quick thinker. They're good in business. They're good with math. They're good with numbers. The negative personality trait would be like that of a con artist. This is why when you watch movies and they show like those pimps, Shit, they have like those big fat pinky rings. That's the negative personality trait. She goes, oh my God. And she starts tapping her friend. She goes, are you listening to this? Like she was genuinely fucking excited learning information like this. And I'm like, this is a loving, caring person. Even in Roman times, uh, they used to use this to signal uh, for love. Well-balanced person. This is actually a leadership finger, you know? And then thumb ring is actually a sign of bisexuality. So whenever a girl has a thumb ring, I, I love getting to that point. Because I always build that up. And it, bro, like, this could all be bullshit, but in my experience, it's been so factually true. Every girl that wears thumb rings is fucking bisexual. Like, they're all down to be, or bi-curious. And then it gets me talking about sexuality. So I get to their thumb, and I'm like, and the thumb, oh my God, you wear thumb, do you always wear this? And she's, no, I started when I was like 14. And I'm like, oh my God, you know what this means? I was like, thumb rings are like a sign of bisexuality. She goes, what? And they start laughing. And that already signals that something in her mind knows that's true. And she goes, but like, I've never been with a girl. I'm like, well, all right, look, you know, what you fantasize about, what you do in real life are two different things. But it just means that you probably, you know, you probably think girls are hot. She goes, well, yeah, maybe I ever kissed a girl. She goes, well, I have my friend, but like never gone any further. I'm like, well, that makes sense. I was like, maybe you're more like bi-curious. I was like, my ex was bi-curious. And through this effective storytelling, you're signaling so much with keen oscillation, you're physically touching, you're telling her some interesting facts that makes you look cool. It also it excites her about herself. You're talking, openly talking about sexuality, and through that story, you're telling her my ex is bisexual. Like, yeah, we used to fuck other girls together. Like, wow, you're a fucking cool dude. Like, I'd actually like to have a threesome, but I don't know how to bring it up. I would, I would need a guy to lead me to do it because that would be like very hard, right? So all these are like part of the tactics I use. And then, um, and then I'll like lean into her ear and I'm like, again, like I said, you're a slut. <laughs> and then I just pull, and they start laughing, but I'm in their ear. And these are all things I do to build tension. And then an easy way to get a girl to kiss you, dude, this is like the easiest way I've found. 
you do like this three questions. I just like, oh, let's, uh, let's play this game. I'll ask you three questions and, um, you know, whatever the fuck. I don't even, I don't even know how I do it. I just do like, um, do you think I'm hot? Or do you find me attractive? I'm like, do you think you're attractive? I was like, you want to kiss me right now? And if she says yes, you just go for it. Sometimes they won't even answer. You just go for it. Because they've physically shown you like, yes, right? So like, so I'd be like, you can ask the first two questions can be like, the first question can be fucking whatever. Second question, I'm like, do you think I'm attractive? Yeah. And then if she says yes, the third question is, do you want to kiss me right now? If she says yes, you go in and kiss her. If she doesn't say yes, but she just leans in, you go in and kiss her. If she goes, maybe, I'd say, well, I didn't say you could. I just asked if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> that way you don't ever break frame. And I don't move, you know what I mean? You're just literally holding eye contact, looking at her lips, looking at her eyes. It's like the easiest That's fucking close. Like, yeah. Was, it's an old school one. What can be the, uh, the first question? The first the um, whatever, dude. You can say whatever. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Do you, like, do, you, do you enjoy spending time with me? Or do you enjoy spending time with me? I wouldn't ask that one because that seems like you're searching for validation from her, which I don't really need. Yeah. Are you comfortable? No. Nah. Yeah, all right, yeah, I'll see three questions. All right, these are easy, right? Let's see if you're good at these. Are you comfortable? Yeah? yeah. Do you find me attractive? Yeah. You wanna kiss me right now? Maybe. I wouldn't say you could, see if you wanted to. Why, like, Jesus, do you think I'm some slut or something? <laughs> like, I wouldn't do it in front of your friends, by the way. I would say, say no. I, but I would say, I would say, I wouldn't do it in front of your friends, by the way. And she's like, no, like, no, and then they'll start judging us. If anything, what I would do, I'd be like, I'd like invite you to that corner over there. But I wouldn't like say it outright, like I'd have you go first and then I'd go later, or I'd walk over there first and then you come so no one notices. Then we just like make out without everyone finding out. That way no one knows you're a slut. And then, you ever tell Luis to basically escalate the role? He's seducing her with his vocal tonality, with his facial expressions, with his body language, and with what he's saying. Because so it's that? vocal tonality up and down, lower vibrant voice is like sexual, right? Like, come here. And you start getting that raspy, vo masculine voice, right? Just like when a girl's sexually aroused, her feminine voice comes out and she starts talking high-pitched. Masculine is, gets more deeper, right? I remain playful to keep things just fucking playful for the most part. It, everything is, depends too, bro, but like, it's one thing I do. And then, um, you know, the coming in and putting sexual tension and then pulling out, like you naughty little girl, you know? Like, I love doing those kinds of things. And, um, Bro, like that is like, that is like basic just intro to getting girls just sexually aroused. You know what I mean? Doing something naughty. I love storytelling in a girl's ear. And I'm like, oh, I wouldn't make out with you now. Like I would do it somewhere else. I was like, and then I'm like, you know, if I wanted to like, oh, like I'd probably, and I'm doing all this in her ear, I'd probably like say, oh, let's go to the patio. Like make up some excuse, you know, like to, to actually like, oh, let's go talk in the patio. But you and I both know we're not gonna go talk in the patio. But, but no, no, come here, come here. But then when we go on the patio, I'd be like, oh, come uh, look at this view. And then you could just play along. And then like you look at the view and then you're like pressed up against the fence or the, the edge there. And then you just feel me like pushing up from behind you. And then you're like turned on, but we're both pretending like we're looking at the view. And then I'd like, as I'm talking to her, I'd be like, um, then I'd, what I do is like, I'd reach right around and I'd grip your hair like this. And I just fucking get like a nice fistful of hair like that. And I'm like, but obviously I'm not gonna do it right now, but that's like what I would do, right? And then I was like, that way you can just feel like you're, you're with like a real fucking man. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say things like that, bro. And like, I use like aggressive, I use aggressive things like, yeah. you know, that way you're like a real fucking man. That way they can just feel like, ooh. Cause in their mind, bro, when girls like watch porn, they hate to admit it. They like seeing that Dom, like, I think it was Freud, the fucking philosopher says that in every guy's deepest, darkest fantasy, he wants to rape a girl. And it's in every girl's deepest, darkest fantasy to, to want to be raped by a guy. And when you get really comfortable with a girl and you ask them these questions, so many girls have fantasies of like, dude, in the middle of the night, if you're ever horny, just like start fucking me. Don't even wake me up. Like they want to experience the feminine just being completely dominated by the masculine having his fucking way with her. And like, if you've ever done dirty talk during sex, girls say the most filthiest fucking things. Like you're calling her a whore, a slut, like just penetrating her soul, her fucking core. 
The feminine is just being overpowered by the masculine and she surrenders into it. Like, in essence, that is like the energy that she's trying to experience in sex. So you're giving her a snippet of that through your talking. So she's like, damn, this man will fuck the shit out of me. And when you grip their fucking hair nice and hard, bro, like borderline kind of hurting just slightly, it's like, holy shit, he's not afraid of me. He's not afraid of being himself. He's not afraid to talk about this. And yeah, I'd like to have sex, but I'm nervous talking about it. And he's making this an easy decision, an easy transition if I wanted to. And he's creating the fantasy in my, in my mind of how we'd go on the balcony. But, and then I'd push her off. After putting all that sexual energy, I'd push her off. I'm like, um, and then I'd talk to her friend and I'd just say something else like that. And then I'd be like, hey, you wanna go check out the balcony? But we just had that conversation of what's gonna happen. So she already knows, and then she gets to play into it, and it's like this whole sexual tension that you're building up, yeah. Can I share something? I read this book, it's called uh, The Secret Garden. Mm -hmm. It's a collection of 100 female fantasies. And it's just like the way women describe their fantasies, like it sounds a lot like what you're saying. It's yeah. Like the way, it's like this slow build up. Yeah, absolutely. Like they don't actually want to be raped by some sociopath. And which is like the biggest fantasy. One of the most- the Oh, by a sociopath? I haven't read that book. I've heard of it though. Uh, well, but the raping thing. But yeah. yeah, it's crazy, bro. They just want to be dominated. <clears throat> they want to be dominated, right? Uh, held against their will and just penetrated type shit. Like it's fucking nuts. You know, and every girl I've dated or been close to or had sexual relationship with, that's the shit they're into.